Hey! Hey! Look who it is, Olivia Rodrigo! Hey, how are you? Rolling up for her 73 questions in epic fashion. I'm so excited. I love this car. Thanks. Approximately how many total miles are on this car? <laughs> Let's see, 17,000. Approximately how many times have people asked you about your driver's license? You know, not as much as you would think. Huh. Mm. So where are you coming from? A cafe. Oh, and I got you a matcha. I don't know if you like it, but oh, it's my really? favorite. That's really generous yeah. of you. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you at this moment? Oh, I'm pretty happy. I'd say probably an 8. Great. Yeah. And what are you currently obsessed with these days? Oh, I love the New York Times crossword. I try to do it every day. Mm. That's a nice habit. Yeah. What's the most interesting thing that you've learned recently? Oh, um, that the banana that's like the flavor of Laffy Taffy is the taste of a banana that's gone extinct, and that's why it doesn't taste like the banana we know. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. And what was your New Year's resolution, and have you stuck to it? Oh, my New Year's resolution is to spend more time alone, and I have definitely done that this year. Do you prefer Saturday nights or Sunday mornings? Sunday morning. What's the worst injury that you've ever had? I've gone through my life pretty unscathed, but I broke my thumb one time in third grade because I slammed my, uh, my, my hand in a car door. Mm. Yeah. Oh, this, um, this matcha tea is amazing. Oh, yeah, I hope you like it. Now, you are a Pisces. Yes. What makes you a typical Pisces? I'm a Pisces to a T. I'm super emotional, I'm musical, and I love a swim. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the best fan gift that you've ever received? Oh, um, I was in Paris last year, and a fan gave me this little keychain. And I stuck it on my purse and I take it with me everywhere I go. The Eiffel Tower? Yeah. That's really cool. Uh-huh. And what item besides your cell phone is always in that purse? Mm. Aquaphor. <laughs> Essential. Yeah. Now, speaking of your cell phone, can you show me something really cool on your phone? I have a lot of voice memos and maybe I'll show you one. Oh, this is the original good for you recording no. on a shitty guitar in my living room. Let's oh see. <laughs> am, I, am I the first person to have listened to that? You are. Oh my gosh, I feel special. <laughs> wow. You're special. Now, what's something that you always carry with you on tour? Uh, I'm a little bit of a germaphobe with hotels, so I always like to have my own pillowcase over the pillows. Good idea. Yeah. Now, what's the most special memory you've ever had from being on tour? Performing at Glastonbury. What album have you been playing nonstop recently? Bridge Over Troubled Water. Oh, classic. <laughs> yeah. Now, I saw that video clip of you meeting Jack White. That is beautiful. I love him. Who is a celebrity now who you're dying to meet? Robert De Niro. Hit me up. Hey, Bob, you watching this? Now, Olivia, I loved your documentary, too. Thanks. It was so fun to follow you on that road trip. What's your favorite road trip destination in general? Salt Lake City. And what's the best present you've ever received? Last year for my birthday, my best friend made a book of 365 things that she loved about me and it was filled with inside jokes and little mm. memories and it was very special. I cried like a baby. And you're known for being a big reader. Look at all those books behind you in that bookcase. I try. Can you give me a recommendation? Oh yeah, come let's here. Let's do it. Show um, me what you got. Let's see. Oh, I read this book recently. It's a bunch of Leonard Cohen poetry. One of my songwriter friends gave it to me and yeah. it's so incredible and I'm in love with Leonard Cohen. He's amazing. Uh, he's great. What else do you have in there that's cool? Oh, um, okay, so I made lots of the record at Electric Lady Studios in New York, and I told the owner of the, the studio that I really love Patti Smith, there's a picture of her in the hallway, and lo and behold, the next day I was playing the piano, and I get a knock at the door, and Patti Smith is there, and she's like, hey, Olivia, nice to meet you, I wanted to come and say hi, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I lost my mind. She gave me this book, this poetry book, and she wrote on the inside. Oh, really? She said... To Olivia, may all your days be inspired. Oh, Bye. that's such a meaningful gift. I love her. She's amazing. Now, I'd be shocked if you didn't have a Carole King record, considering I see a Carole King book right there. Yeah, this thing. This is one of the first records I actually ever bought. Me and my mom bought it from the thrift store. It's a little thrift store tag. Yeah, I love her. She's incredible. All right, now, can you name me your favorite songs by the following artists, Rapid Fire? Yes. Let's do it. Lord. Liability. Carly Simon. You're so vain. Alanis. Not the doctor. Olivia Rodrigo. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Here, wait. I got this for you, though. What? what you... Yeah, you can tell me your favorite. How about that? What? I'd like that, that is, better. That is really, really... That's incredible. I just walk away with a free Olivia Rodrigo album. It's shameless self-promotion. It works. <laughs> what album have you listened to the most in your entire life? Um, 
Probably this one. Elephant by the White Stripes. Oh, that's cool. What's a song that can always make you cry? Valentine by Fiona Apple. Hmm. What's the best piano ballad ever written? Someone like you. <laughs> and when you play piano, do you prefer playing alone or for people? I prefer playing alone, but since you're here, I might make an exception. Come here. No. Yeah, come here. What is going on right now? Are you... This uh, is where I hang out all the time. I do everything here. This is incredible. Um, Olivia, what are you going to play? Let's see. See if you can recognize this. This, this is the new new. New material. You should play something with me. How about something totally spontaneous and not rehearsed? Totally spontaneous. <laughs> Let's Fair. do it, Olivia Rodrigo. Ready? Go. Yep. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Killing it. You gotta take me on tour. Wow. Come on. Oh, that's how you do it. Oh, I love it. Great team! I'm really serious about you taking me on tour if you, if you need a, you know, duetter. Say I the guess. word, you're there. All right, amazing. <laughs> when you think about songs, Olivia, what did you call the first song that you ever wrote? Um, I've been writing songs for a long time, but I think the first song that I wrote on the piano was called Superman. And what was the first song that you felt really connected to? Uh, I wrote this song called Astronaut when I was 14, and it made me believe that I could, like, really pursue songwriting. Does being a self-identified perfectionist make songwriting a lot harder? I actually don't think I'm a perfectionist. I think as I, I get older, I realize that um, if I were only to make things that were perfect, I would literally never make anything at all. So I think I kind of had to get out of that mindset. That's good philosophy. <laughs> yeah. And to anyone out there who wants to write a song for the first time ever, what three steps should they consider? Hmm. Um... Coming up with a good title and a good concept is important. A melody that moves you. And other than that, just believe in yourself and keep trying because, I don't know, I've written so many bad songs mm. in my life and that's how you get to the good ones. Mm. Who's the most important music teacher that you've ever had and what did they teach you? My piano teacher, Kate. She taught me how to listen to music like a songwriter. And it's really, really special to watch how you and your producer, Dan, work together. Uh, what is the most important quality in a good producer? Good taste and honesty. Now, driver's license. Let's talk about driver's license. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> Everyone wants to talk about that. How has your relationship to that song changed over the past couple of years? Uh, honestly, I, I am just still in such a state of disbelief. I just like wrote that song in my living room and it was just a little piece of my heart and I, I can't believe all of the doors it's opened for me. I'm just so eternally grateful. And all that has led to this, a new album coming out. Yeah. <laughs> now, I heard that you recorded and wrote some of this new album in New York City. Why did you want to write it there? I think New York is so inspiring, and um, every day of my life, I just try to be more and more like Carrie Bradshaw, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect transition into the next question. I know that you are a big fan of Sex in the City. I love. But what else have you been binge-watching these days? Mm, I watched all of The Walking Dead. Love it. Watched The Last of Us, and The Sopranos. Very good. Now, your second live performance ever was on SNL. What did you say to yourself before taking the stage? I was so nervous before SNL. I actually like cried in my dressing room. I was so scared, but <laughs> thankfully it turned out okay. Now you said that your pre-concert rituals are vocal warm-ups and having tea. What's the best meal to eat before going on stage? Um, almost every night before a show, I'd have a turkey sandwich. Oh, speaking of, I have the best meal for a 73 Questions interview. Come here. I don't even know this. There's yeah. a best meal? <laughs> Pulling out all the stops, one. Oh my gosh, look, what have I done to deserve this? <laughs> What's an app that you use that's not very popular? Um, it's very popular, but I love going on Zillow and Redfin. I use it like Instagram. It's very entertaining. What is a simple pleasure that you couldn't live without? I love a bubble bath. What is something that you are surprisingly good at? Ice skating. What's something you do that you probably shouldn't? Listen to true crime podcasts alone in my house <laughs> at night. That's pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> and what's something you don't do that you probably should do? <sighs> Read all my emails. Wait, come here. What? I baked you a little banana bread. No, you did not. Hopefully you like it. I kind of ran out of butter, but it should be good. Oh my God, I'm having Olivia Rodrigo's banana bread. <laughs> this is the best day I've ever had. You're sweet. Oh, besides banana bread, what is a meal you can cook really well from scratch? 
Mmm, I can make good cacio with Pepe. Here. Mm. Sorry. Okay. Oh, really? Oh, this is amazing. Try Thank it. you so much. Appreciate it. if it's wow. good. Um, okay, here we go. That is pretty damn good. Yay! I'm happy but you like it. I don't know if it's as good for you as McDonald's oatmeal. <laughs> is that still your favorite fast food? I love a good McDonald's oatmeal. I also love an In-N-Out double-double cheeseburger with a Neapolitan shake. We are so happy you did your first Vogue cover shoot. <sighs> Me too. What was that like, shooting your first Vogue cover? So surreal. What was your favorite look from the shoot? There's this little sparkly mini dress that I really loved and it reflected the light really pretty. Who makes your favorite jeans? Levi's. And what's the best tip for winged eyeliner? Practice and yeah, that's just it. I, I still feel like I'm really bad at it to this day. <laughs> what was your first big fashion purchase that you made? Um, my Chanel bag that I was just wearing. I think it's the only big fashion purchase that I made. I bought it when I finished my first album as a celebration gift to myself. What era of fashion are you most inspired by? The 90s. What's your favorite vintage find? Okay, so this dress used to be Chloe Sevigny's and she uh, had a sample sale where she sold a bunch of her clothes. And I've had this dress, the picture of her wearing this dress, saved on my Pinterest for years and I was actually able to get my hands on it and I'm so lucky it's my most prized possession. It looks incredible. Thank you. <laughs> Top three tips for vintage shopping, go. Uh, um, have patience and go with your friends and get stuff altered. Now I see you have some family photos on your fridge. Oh yeah. Tell me some stories. Here, what do let's you have? see. Um, these are two of my friends, Natty and Conan, and uh, I took them to where I grew up, Temecula, and we went to the mall, and we took this at the mall. I love this picture. Cool. Uh, and this is my parents. We went to New York for Christmas, and we had to take a picture by the Rockefeller Center oh, tree. Oh, how cute is that? Classic. What's your favorite family tradition? Um, not this year, but usually uh, my family and I go to the beach on Christmas Day. Are your parents musical? Not at all, I'm the black sheep. And what's the most trouble you ever got in with your parents? I am such a goody two-shoes. I really don't think I got into too much trouble. The one thing I remember is when I was in like first grade, I bought a hamburger at school, at the cafeteria uh, with my parents' money and I didn't eat the lunch that my mom packed me and I cried about it for a week. I felt so Aww. guilty. Yeah, anyway, let's go outside. Okay, what's a phrase that you just say way too much? Slay. It's a little cringe. Oh wait, here, let me, let me get your tea. All right, what's a quote that you live by? Um, what it all comes down to is everything's gonna be fine, fine, fine. Oh, that is a great outlook. <laughs> now, I'm amazed at how you started your career so young. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, do you remember how old you were when you did your first ever audition? Oh, um, it was probably like six. I was so young. Can you describe how this first audition went? Um, it was for parenthood, and I obviously didn't get it, so I guess it didn't go that well. Things worked out for you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. What posters did you have on your wall when you were a kid? Oof, I had Twilight posters on the wall. Team Edward since day one. I was going to say the same thing, go yeah. Team Edward. And since you were spending so much time acting as a teenager, what was it like to go to high school on set? It's very strange, um, but I feel lucky to have gotten good tutoring. And what's the best thing about being an only child? I'm best friends with my parents, and I got so much tension growing up. And what's the most stressful thing about being an only child? Uh, sometimes I really wish I had an older sister to give me advice. What values do you hope you'll still hold on to when you're 35 years old? I hope I still have my gratitude. I'm pretty sure you will. <laughs> Why was it important for you to make a statement on Roe v. Wade at Glastonbury? Um, yeah, the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade the day before I was supposed to perform at Glastonbury, and I just think forcing women to give birth is really horrifying. We got a dog over here barking. <laughs> I know, he feels the same. <laughs> the dog agrees. <laughs> now, Olivia, I am devastated. I'll tell you why. There's only two more questions left oh. of this interview. It's been 728 days since you released Sour. Wow. And that dog is upset about it. <laughs> uh, what is one word to describe Sour? Angsty. And what's one word to describe your new album? Gutsy. Well, you were gutsy to do this interview, Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> Thank you Amazing so much for having me. Amazing job. We I had did so it. Much fun.